Okay, this is question five from the January 2022 P2 paper. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, a remainder theorem, factor theorem, uh, algebraic long division style question. We've got fx is given by that function up there. It says uh, when it's divided by x minus 1, we get that remainder. When it's divided by x plus 1, we get that remainder. And they're asking us to show that. So I'm going to jump straight in and do that. And then we'll see where we go from there. So for part A, just a reminder, fx is 3x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 10. And they said when it's divided by x minus 1, the remainder is k. So in other words, f1 equals k. That's the remainder theorem. So f1 is... 3 lots of 1 squared, plus, uh, cubed, sorry. 3 lots of 1 cubed plus a lots of 1 squared plus b lots of 1 minus 10. That's equal to k. Let's just tidy that up. 3 plus a plus b minus 10 equals k. So in other words, a plus b minus 7 equals k. That's going to be one of the equations I'm going to use uh, when x sorry when it's divided by x plus one then the remainder the remainder the remainder is uh, minus 10k so that's going to give me f minus one equals minus 10k let's make it clear that's a minus um, so we do exactly the same idea three lots of minus one cubed three lots of minus one squared equals minus 10k this time. So this is going to simplify out to give me another uh, equation. What have I got here? Just be careful. Minus 3 plus a minus b minus 10 equals minus 10k. And tidying that up is a minus b minus 13 equals minus 10k. So I've got this one and this one that I'm now going to use and try and simplify them down to what I've got. The simplest, I think, way of doing it is I've got k here as being that, so I could just substitute that in for k there. I'm going to give an examiner a sort of idea of what I'm going to do, so I'm going to say sub 1 into 2. I think that's fair enough to give me an explanation of what we're doing. So a minus b minus 13 is equal to minus 10k so that's minus 10 lots of a plus b minus 7. Now normally I almost jump to the answer from here but this is a proof so let's just put an extra line in here a minus b minus 13 let's at least multiply this out minus 10a minus 10b plus 70 but if I now rearrange all of that I am going to get 11a I am going to get 9b and I just leave the constants on the other side so I'll get equals 83 and that's what we were being asked to show so that all fits in nicely with what I wanted to do okay part b says um, given also that 3x minus 2 is a factor of fx can we find the value of a and b? Yeah, so if I got that, I should be able to get another equation from that. Let's just explain what's going on. If 3x minus 2 is a factor, then 3x minus 2 equals 0 would be 3x equals 2 would be x equals 2 thirds. So what it means is that f of 2 thirds, because it's a factor, there's no remainder, that's going to equal to zero. So pretty much the same sort of method as I was just using. Uh, three lots of two thirds cubed plus a lots of two thirds squared, b lots of two thirds minus 10 is equal to naught. So we need to get um, an equation from that so just take your time, uh, do it on the calculator if you want to, but 
2 thirds cubed is 8 over 27, so that's going to be 8 over 9 here. It's 4 over 9a. It's 2 thirds b. Minus 10 equals 0. And then I think the simplest thing to do is just multiply everything by 9 here. So we end up with 8, 4a, 6b, minus 90 equals 0. So we could write that as 4a plus 6b is equal to, take that all over to the other side, that makes 82 there. So we've already got from before the previous equation, 11a plus, what was it, 11a plus 9b equals 83. And what we're now doing with those is trying to see if we can solve those simultaneously to work out what A and B are going to be. So if we want to do that, uh, simplest thing to do, you can relabel them, one and two. Uh, what I'm going to do with these now is to multiply this one by 11 and multiply this one by 4. Let's see if we can get rid of the... Um, a's as we're going through and doing these so if you do that we're going to get 44a plus 66b oh gosh uh, multiplying that out is going to give me 332 sorry just checking that 82 times 11 so it's 902, excuse me, it's 902. With the other one, we're going to get 44A, 36B, and that one equals 332. Subtract those away from each other, we'll end up with 30 B equaling 570 and that means that B works out to be equal to 19 that's one of our answers use the fact it doesn't matter which one I'm going to use 11 a plus 9 B equals 83 so 11 a plus 9 lots of 19 equals 83 so 11a works out to be 83 minus line dots of 19 minus 171. So 11a equals minus 88, thank goodness. And I get something like that. You then say, all right, a equals minus 8. Very, very unlikely that I would have got two integer values for those unless I was doing it using the right method. Okay, so that's a and b done. Last part says, hence find a quadratic expression gx so that uh, fx is equal to 3x minus 2 times that's a bit complicated so let, let's just write that down and then work out what we're doing before we do it so what we're saying is fx is equal to 3x minus 2 times gx and fx of course is 3x cubed we know the numbers now so minus 8x squared plus 19x minus 10, we're saying that's equal to that. Right now I can see what I've got to do. Now I've written it down like that and just given myself a little bit of time. Gx is the cubic divided by 3x minus 2, isn't it? So just doing something like that to sort of remind you about what we're actually going to be trying to do here. So if I want gx gx is just going to be equal to my cubic. So algebraic long division now. I've got 3x cubed minus 8x squared plus 19x minus 10, and I'm dividing it by 3x minus 2. To be fair, I don't need that yet. Let's put that in in a second. Let's move this all over a little bit, bit more central. 
Right, how do we do these? Well, just very basically as we're going through and do this, you might need to go away and have a look at another video for this. But if I want to do this long division, I say, how many times does 3x go into 3x cubed? And the answer is it goes in x squared times. Once I've got x squared, I'm going to multiply x squared by all of this by 3x minus 2. So if I do x squared times 3x minus 2, I get 3x cubed minus 2x squared. And I've put it underneath there because now I'm going to subtract that. When I subtract that then, the way I was always taught to do it, you don't have to. But if I'm subtracting it, I actually do that and that is subtracting it. The 3x cubed take away the 3x cubed, they disappear. That's the whole point. And minus 8x squared plus 2x squared gives me minus 6x squared. I now bring these values down. So I end up with plus 19x minus 10. And I now go through the whole process again, but not how many times does x squared go into sorry not how many times does 3x go into 3x cubed now how many times does 3x go into minus 6x squared okay so when we're doing that how many times does 3x just the first value go into minus 6x squared, it goes in minus 2x times. If it goes into minus 2x times, I have minus 2x up there. And now I'm going to repeat the whole process again. Multiply that by that, put my answer in here, subtract them away, and see what I end up with my remainder this time. So minus 2x times 3x minus 2, gives me minus 6x squared plus 4x. Sorry, I've missed an x out there. Plus 4x there. Subtract that just like we did last time. Well, when I'm subtracting it, let's see, I was always taught just to change the signs there. The first term disappears again. That's the whole point. 19x minus 4x is 15x. Bring these values down minus 10 and now i'm repeating the whole process this last time how many times does 3x go into 15x it goes in five times do five times 3x minus 2 15x minus 10 and thankfully at this stage oh good when i take these away i'm not going to get a remainder which i knew was going to happen because they told me that it was a factor they told me that we had this scenario going on up here so now i can finish off by saying okay fx which is equal to the 3x cubed minus x squared 8x squared sorry plus 19x minus 10 is the same as 3x minus 2 multiplied by x squared minus 2x plus 5 so I've worked out what the GX is, explicitly state it, GX is X squared minus 2X plus 5. Right, quite a long question. Hopefully all of that makes sense.